recording. Okay, so thank you everyone for being here and this is a Bybit crash tutorial with a bit of basic trading. Now looking at those with us uh, online at the moment, I'm seeing quite a few experienced traders here as in the RT community. So you're going to be bored as hell because you've you most of you know all of this. I mean, Adam Stevens, what are you doing here? You know all this. <laughs> um, anyway, mind you, repetition is the mother of learning, so you, you, you're bound to learn something new. Um, my OCD is killing me here at the moment. I don't know why this you, this why of you, decided to do a little walkabout. There we go. That's better. So. Yeah, we're going to go through where to sign up, setting up the account, talking about the spot accounts and the, der the derivative accounts, the basics of trading, um, how to actually place trades, and then talking a little bit about leverage and um, and whatnot. Now, I will be putting these videos on YouTube, okay? So I will be having to chop them up, etc. So I'm not going to go too far in depth of the basics of trading, etc. Just just the very, very, very basics, because obviously in the RT community we cover the things in much more detail. Um, but I'm getting a billion questions on how to short, how to trade on Bybit, so yeah. You guys get all the juicy stuff in the trading pubs anyway. Right, so first of all, where to sign up, how to actually go to Bybit. Now, this is the first thing with, uh, with Crypto Shizzle. Um, if you ever type in you know, but you know, let's type in Bybit, etc. There's there's always a scam lying around, whether you're, you're typing in Binance or Kraken, and people and scammers will create fake websites or clone a website and change it. So you have to be doubly sure on what you're clicking. So someone could be they could have a website called Byblit, for example. Instead of the I, they could have an L. And with that font size, you could be signing up to the wrong thing and sending money to a scammer. So always be careful. Um, thankfully, I can't actually see any scam results here, and it looks like the top one. Um, and if you're ever unsure, and you, like you can do two things: you control plus or minus to to really zoom in. You can see, oh yeah, it's Bybit, um, or hell, you can just copy the address and just pop it into you know Notepad or something, and go, oh yeah, it, it's fine. Um, people do get conned by that, by the way. Um, and the reason I'm being really anal here is that someone has recently fallen for one of the fake Instagram um, scams um, of me. So my accounts on Facebook, Twitter and Insta tend to get cloned about two or three times a month. Um, and yeah, that yeah, someone sent $3,000 to a scammer thinking it was me. Uh, I felt guilty. I, I felt so bad. So... Um, I, I felt guilty even though I didn't done nothing wrong. It's just that obviously this person trusted me and sent three thousand dollars thinking he was talking to me. Anyway, um, I mean I'm constantly posting stuff about that. So that's a scam shizzle. So find Bybit. So let's do it. I'm already signed in, so let's do it on a private window, so it doesn't really notice who I am. Um, if you've been in crypto for a while, you're or, you're already used to signing up to all sorts of different things. Just go through the normal login process. So sign up, go through, you know, email, password, all that sort of stuff. Um, you have to verify your email, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not going to teach you suck eggs. I think you can all understand that. Um, then when you get on there, let's go to the account. So obviously, this is almost exactly like Binance. I still have a sneaky suspicion that Binance owns this because this platform is literally identical in almost every way. So if you're familiar with Binance, you'll be familiar with this. Um, so let's first of all start off with you know the, the settings type stuff. So if you go to account and security, I'm already breaching, um, in fact I'm going to have to edit bits of this because you can see the email address I'm using. That's the first part of CSEC which I'm really ruining here. but. Hopefully you RT members are, <laughs> you're not going to hack me, but for YouTube that will be edited out. <clears throat> so um, let's just go through these in a logical order. You will have to identify yourself. Um, in fact, I'm already level one verified. I should be level two. I just need to get a utility statement. So the, the first one, you start off from basic, 
where, which yeah that's no um, ID level one is where you have to give your ID and a selfie do one of those stupid things where you have to hold it up to your face um, thankfully it's less um, glitchy than the Binance one sometimes the Binance one doesn't really work and level two you just need proof of address the annoying thing is I, I can't find a freaking utility bill so I'm just waiting until one pops up um, but yeah I mean most people don't even need to get to level two because I mean if you are having issues of struggling to withdraw more than 50 Bitcoin a day they're champagne problems and you're probably in the wrong place <laughs> um, but anyway let's go back to account settings all of it is pretty straightforward yeah I have three trusted devices logged in that's my mobile phone my crypto designated laptop when I'm doing business trips and my main station where I'm talking right now um, yep do not get SMS authentication so many phones are being cloned these days just don't get authy so if you if you don't have authy get it it's much better than Google Authenticator um, if you lose your phone and you have Google Authenticator it is an absolute ball ache and a half um, to re-establish whereas authy is cross-platform cross devices etc so is, yeah. Hi, can I just Yo, to Mike. Interject? It's Mike. Hey, mate. Hey, mate. Um, you know you can do one, uh, two, 2FA on one password instead of Authy. True. I'm still not a fan of one password or last pass and stuff like that because if someone hacks into your last password th via a keylogger, they have access to your whole kingdom. True. I, I just don't like it. Um, that's one single point of failure and I don't like choke points and bottlenecks in my CSEC. Um, it's just my personal preference, but yeah. But yeah, it, it, it's a good, good point. Um, so yeah, that, that's the main thing is really, uh, anything else here? I don't really care about all the other sort of bits and bobs. Contrary to popular belief, you don't actually have to know every single thing about a trading platform to do well. You just, uh, like, it's 80-20. I'm gonna teach you the you know the twenty percent of understanding Bybit, which will get you eighty percent of um, of the profits. I've only started. I've been only been using Bybit in the last, I guess what, end or beginning of March. So it's been basically two months. I still don't know all of it, and I don't think I ever will because I know I know what I I don't need to know everything yet. I've still made over eight hundred thousand dollars with trading Bybit. So like you don't need to. So that's what. So this hopefully shouldn't take too long. So where to sign up, done that, setting up the account, that's pretty much it really, um, in terms of um, all the boring bits and bobs. Checking the settings, yeah, I've turned off some of the notifications. I didn't want emails because they kept bothering me. Um, yeah, this is one, yeah. deposits. So I've turned this off, so I've, basically, if you send stuff to Bybit, I want it to go to the spot wallet not the derivatives wallet so I've just turned that off and I'll and I think I come on to that right now talking about spot and derivatives so when you click on the assets tab um, you've got a whole whether you choose the the the, the, the drop-down menu or the stuff on the side it's all the same um, so the spot wallet is the wallet or spot account is what you're using for buying actual tokens so you can use Bybit just like Binance to go in and buy actual tokens so as you can see I own nothing other than ba ba barely any BUSD um, so that's holding actual tokens so um, yeah if any if I you know want to deposit some buzzed let's say for example I'll get the address etc send it here uh, and that way it stays in my spot account and I don't like things to really affect my derivatives account one of the ways I do my portfolio sort of trading management etc is that I, I keep track of my USD my USD balance going up and down so if I'm like sending stuff to and from it I don't want this number being affected this is just me my personal preference you don't have to copy it but um, yeah now, the yeah, so that that's really the, the two main account. You got like a funding account if you want to do other bits and bobs. Um, I don't really dick around with any of the other stuff. Um, it's just not much point. I use Binance, uh, Bybit for one singular purpose, and that's to short the shit out of the markets, or to go eventually go long um, when the markets do start 
behaving nicely. Um, the and like Binance, it gives you really good APIs for random shit coins that they list. So don't bother. Right, moving on. So spot. Okay, let's talk about the USDT perpetual and inverse. So the way that it works is you got really these two. You got a whole bunch of um, trading things that you can do from options to futures, etc. I want to keep things simple. Okay, you don't need to know about any of these really other than USDT perpetual and inverse perpetual. Now the word perpetual means is that you can place a trade and let it run indefinitely. Whereas when, when you're placing options and futures there is expiry contract uh, expiry dates where you have to close or exercise the basically your trade will close in a nutshell. So perpetual is what we're playing with. So we're going to focus on USDT perpetual to begin with. And then later on, I'll come back round to inverse. If I've forgotten, please remind me. Um, but what this means is that you can fund your Bybit trading account, let's call it, with USDT as collateral. Sorry, in fact, let's just go back to my derivative account here. Um, USDT, you can put whatever um, money in here. And then you can place trades and it'll use this collateral, whatever's in this USDT wallet, at, um, to place and facilitate your trades. Um, so, as it says here, position margin. So every time you place a trade, it's effectively going to take a, or it doesn't take, it simply apportions a chunk of your wallet to run that trade. And every trade will have a, have a margin requirement, which I'll, I'll talk about in a bit. So it means that right now with the trades I'm running, I've basically used up a million dollars worth of margin and I've got 700 grand left if I want to place any other trade so you know and you know the way I trade I never uh, go over the top I'm only ever risking point two five percent max risk per trade so I'm literally barely scratching the surface in terms of you know the amount of risk I can take but you don't need crazy amounts of risk as you've seen uh, if for those who've been here in the RT community you've seen all of the trades I've been placing on telegram and all, all of the joys and it's been great getting all those emails. So, um, Alan G, thanks for your email today. Um, a cracking return, mate. Anywho, so let's get back to USDT. Yeah, so that's, in fact, I could talk about that quickly in verse. So, your. So, hopefully, you understand the UST, USDT part. Now, the inverse bit is, I think, pretty pretty damn cool for a bull market not a bear market so what it means is that you can deposit any of these main cryptos here so Bitcoin ADA and any of these and let's take ETH for example I can deposit a whole bunch of ETH into this in inverse perpetual wallet and that ether will be used as collateral for trades now you can only place trades on ether not anything else okay so this is why I'm not using it at the moment because at the moment I don't want to own any crypto. Crypto, for those you, uh, for those watching this in the future, this is the 9th of May. Um, basically, everyone, everything's shitting its pants right now. Um, pretty much all cryptos, as I talk, have breached major base support levels. Bitcoin's entering the sort of it looks like my little white hole is about to be filled here. Um, pretty much every every major crypto other than Luna there base support has been breached um, Binance has had an absolute nightmare and that is one hell of a head and shoulders what, if that gets breached god Binance is toast um, yeah so at the moment I don't want to own, I literally don't own any crypto so I'm not that's why I don't use this but the reason I say this is a great bull market opportunity is because at the moment, let's just say I've got how much is in here? Let's 1.8 mil in, in USDT. If we're in a bull market, that that tether is not appreciating in, in price, obviously. It's just gonna sat there being pegged to the dollar. And the dollar, as we know, is you know a shrinking ice cube melting in the Sahara Desert uh, with the amount of you know the, the dollars that um, the Federal Reserve are uh, inflating away. So in a bull market, I will not be using USDT 
Oh, I'll probably have a little bit in here just so I have flexibility so I can short or go long on a whole range of stuff. But in a bull market, you know, I, I mean, I, I reckon I'm, I could probably take out, you know, call it 700 grand from this, this tether wallet and still trade the way that I normally trade without getting any issues. So, which means I can, re, you know, I could use that 700k and put it into ether. You know, and, and that way, the collateral I'm using to trade will continue to um, go go up as I'm trading it. So in a bull market, the collateral will go up in value, and the the trades, hopefully I'm going long, um, will also go up. Or even you can hedge it. So you know, in a bull market when things are going up, if there are opportunities where you think you, you know you could short it, let's say there's like a temporary collapse like this, you could short it at the same time, and you know it's. it's I, I really quite I'm looking forward to using these inverse perpetual wallets but for the moment in a bear market I don't want to touch that shit I'm just in tether now when you're yeah so the way you get into this is you simply click on the derivatives tab oh no hover over it then click USDT perpetual and it'll take you to the main trading screen and this is where you're gonna live this is where I pretty live pretty much live I, I literally only check this this number here just to has have a like, sort of barometer of how well the trades are doing or not that that's the only time i look at it um and as i said in a previous trading but i think probably last week is that when you have a whole board of trades on um like in this case i've got what how many trades i don't know 10 more than 10 or whatever um it's hard to keep track of each individual trade right however by just keeping an eye on this, this 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 floating profit and loss, I can sort of get a nice feeling of what the market is doing. So the fact that this has gone up, I don't know, 10 grand in the last five minutes, or whatever, means that the markets are still just slowly moving down because obviously I'm shorting everything at the moment. If all of a sudden this was would, would go to 155 down, to, let's say to 100K, I'd know that all of a sudden there's a pullback. Um, and for the moment, at some point during this trading, um, this this session, I think I may actually end up closing all trades. I'm getting very snatchy. Um, you asked me why I joined this is because I want to see what happens at two thirty. <laughs> you're on that page. That would be interesting. The Wait a minute. Um, what's happening at two thirty? So US for, markets open. Yeah. Sorry. US, US markets. Ah, uh, uh, bloody. Uh, normally it's yeah. two o'clock, but obviously it, it changes in, in the time of the year. I, was, I thought for a moment you were wondering, no, there's nothing going on. Yeah, so sometimes I look at this as well, the, the Forex factory calendar. It shows you any crazy sort of announcements. Um, so CP Lie uh, figures are out to, on Wednesday, 8.30 in the morning. But other than that, there's nothing news-wise this week. Last week was just cray-cray. Interest rates, unemployment, everything. Right, so before we get on to that, Actually, when the U.S. markets open, um, they've, they've all been drifting down. So, I, well, this morning this was a big fat red candle. It looks like it has had a temporary pullback. So t mm, interesting. Just looking at the dollar. Dollar seems to be had a bit of a pullback. It still it looks like it's going back up. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be pretty. I think it's, it's interesting, interesting to see as a bit of a peeping Tom yeah. uh, affects some of the, <laughs> lots of open leverage trades. Yes, exactly. Um, because obviously whatever stocks do, Bitcoin and Ether are going to follow. And then obviously if Bitcoin and Ether start to pull back, all of my trades are going to pull back. Uh, and, and at some point, uh, so I guess I'm fasting forward, this is a execution trade tip here. If you've got a load of bunch of trades like this, you want to close everything, you click close. Oh, fuck. It. I just closed all trades. I thought it'd give me a confirmation sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear lord, I'm an idiot. Well, at least I've snatched 175 grand worth of trades. <laughs> oh mate. Ah, uh, I've That's literally dropped a bomb there. Was. I've. Oh, oh, at least I took a screenshot of this, so we can actually. It's still, it's not a. Ah, that's annoying. Right. Um, I still, even after all these years, I struggle to present and teach at the same time. 
Um, at least I can now concentrate on the on the lesson. <laughs> um, you want to let um, everyone on Telegram know that you've snatched. <laughs> oh, sh yeah. Let's just stupid. Ah, can't type now. Stupid me accidentally closed all trades doing a Bybit tutorial. Shit. Um, will continue to give signals as though the trades were active. 